Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have you help me welcome an incredible businessman, an incredible teacher, and an incredible individual to lecture and share with thousands of people all across the nation and all across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Stevenson. When you look at it, you gotta execute flawlessly in every aspect of what you do or it doesn't happen. And it starts with you. You wanna cause your company to fail? Say these words, that's the way we always done it. No, that's one reason why you're here, to find out new and different ways to do it. And that's what we've got to understand in business. Relentless pursuit of excellence to take it, because if you don't, if you don't like change, you're going to hate extinction. We got a lot of people out there that don't go find out how good they're doing. In my companies, every six months, we ask this question to our customers. In a perfect world, if we could provide you perfect service, what are we not providing? Because let me tell you something. A customer will not pick up the phone today and call you and complain. You know what they do? They leave. And getting them back is harder. The top 10 employers in 1960, the top 10 employers last year, one is still on the list. See, the why is what you guys are all at. One is still on the list. So I've had the opportunity to interview over 10,000 employees, managers, and senior executives in over 250 different industries. I've, I've run companies. I've sold, as I said, in over 20 countries, and, and I've run my own sales organizations. And so I have an understanding of, of what I'm talking about. This is not stuff that I've just studied. These are real life experiences that I'm going to be sharing with my audience, and I think that's they, that they have a real appreciation for that. They take a look at it. Where can we be exploited? You know, what markets can be easily invaded? And then they figure out how to shore it up. That's what we're trying to identify, how you can get better at what you do. That's why we're having a meeting like this, to raise the bar on you guys. This is why people bring me in. The average lifespan of a multinational corporation in the United States is 40 years. Just 40 years. Japan and Europe, 12.5. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, we got to raise the bar. If you do what you've always done, you'll be gone. And that's my concern. You've got to understand that future success is not inevitable because of past triumphs. Tell me what you're going to do for me tomorrow. One of my clients, I remember Joe Mullins at Anheuser-Busch, he says, Rob, change is not a way of life, it is life. I said, Joe, why did you share that with us? He said, we know what's going to happen. We've decided to do it faster than our competition. That's the attitude that we're looking for. Right now, you can close your eyes and you can visualize the people back at your company that are the right ones, can't you? You can see them right now, the ones you can count on all the time. But you know what's scary? You can also close your eyes and visualize the wrong ones, can't you? You're saying to yourself right now, why in the world did I hire them? They were breathing at the time, okay? And you needed to fill that spot. The worst thing that you could ever do is fill that spot with the wrong person because they're going to cost you a customer. I remember 25 years ago when I got into the speaking business, uh, I had people tell me I was nuts because I was going to customize my program to fit the need of my clients. They said it's too time consuming, it's, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to do as many programs, it's going to be too hard. And they were right, it was time consuming, it was hard, uh, but the amount of programs I didn't think mattered. To me it's not the amount of programs that you do, it's doing programs good. program for FedEx Freight and we were in Vegas and there was about 2,500 executives in the room and the senior vice president of marketing got up and he said if you see a freight truck driving down the highway that has any other name on it other than FedEx that's my freight go get it and that was the attitude that he had the business is out there ladies and gentlemen they're just gonna do what take them I love his personality and his style uh, very engaging with the audience and the stories that he tells, the experiences, so he's given me the motivation to just keep going back, keep going back over and over again until you get the contract that you want and build those relationships.
smart people learn from their mistakes. Wise people learn from others. And then he says, I'm looking for the person that's going to do what? Please pick it up. You know, you want to No, not mine. Okay. <laughs> Have some fun is what it's all about, folks, because if you do, you can take it to the next level. And while you're doing this, have the answers. Um, I, I enjoy it because he's funny. He brings a sense of humor to his speaking, and I love that. With the humor that he puts in there and the, uh, the way that he explains things and the personal experiences that he puts in there makes it really great to learn. Relatable, definitely, and funny. So um, he's got a lot of different things to say in a relatable way that everybody can understand. Choices in America are everywhere, and you've got to have the product selection or they will be gone. You don't think so, folks? Starbucks. You can buy coffee 19,000 different ways, not counting the five different types of milk that you can put in there. Why? Because the customers demanded it. Choices. Tropicana. Ten years ago, they had two types of orange juice. Now they sell 24. Why? Customers demand it. Choices. Arby's opened in 1964 with one roast beef sandwich. Now they sell over 30. Most of them are not roast beef choices. Ted Turner took CNN to every major network in the United States. ABC, CBS, and NBC had a 92% market share. They threw him out. They said, get out of here, you stupid billboard salesman. Who wants to listen to news 24 hours a day? That is a stupid idea. He walked up on a silver platter and he only wanted to participate and they kicked him out. He sold that stupid idea for $7 billion. I'll give you another rule about change. The idea that gets the most resistance, probably a pretty good idea. Now everybody's got your right over your left or left over your right, switch. Is that not disgusting? You're sitting there going, oh, you just, oh, that's just weird. And if you did it that way for six months, the other way would feel like See, that's one of the problems we have when we talk, talking about change and the relentless pursuit. Sometimes it takes a while before any change will feel right. So when someone's talking to you in the meetings in the next few days about how you can do this better and that better, don't try and tell me what's wrong with that. Try and tell me what's right with that so you can get better and make more money. Uh, I thought he was phenomenal, very engaging, very entertaining. Um, he's got a great message. I like how he moves pretty quickly. My statement is, what did they say? Real simple, knowledge. We've got the knowledge, we've got the solutions. That's what was talked about today. We've got the solutions that's going to help them make more money so they can take care and understand what's going on. But my statement to you is there's a lot of people that want to, but they're not willing to. Are you willing to take the necessary steps to get it? Are you willing to study to take it to the next level? Am I 25 years old? Let's see if I can get down here. I gotta see somebody. Anybody? Anybody wanna be? Oh, you are? Your name, sir, is Jamie. Corporate America hates you, Jamie. <laughs> they absolutely hate you. You know why? You wanna find out about a company, you have the audacity to do what? You Google it. Just type it in. And then he gets really fancy. He types in complaints about that company. And what do we do? We get a master list about that organization. Yeah, I love the engaging uh, audience participation that he has us uh, do with him. And the PowerPoints, the slides are very engaging also and very quick and it keeps your attention. It's funny. inspire them and motivate them. I love doing that, but then I want to give them things that they're capable of doing when they get home. Tyler is engaging. Uh, you know, everything he talks about, you can relate to on a daily basis. I'm, I'm definitely going to take a lot of stuff he talks about back home, so it's good stuff. It's the how-to that's most important. It's the content of telling them, here are the tangible things that you can do when you go back to your office that's going to make you successful. And by doing that, I feel you're going to have a valuable program that I can deliver. He's awesome. 
He was mentioning things that we never thought of in, in different light. A vibrant, energetic, knowledgeable. One thing that's neat about my industry, but also scary about my industry, is that I'm going to be up there for an hour to two hours sharing my soul, it's giving all the experiences that I can to the audience in the room, and, and at the end, you're going to know how you did. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, it's been an honor.